Ladies and gentlemen, Bangkok Bank is privileged and honored to have His Excellency Mr. Lim Jok Hoi, Secretary General of ASEAN here at the AEC Business Forum. Now, I would like to invite him to deliver the keynote speech under the topic, Digital Economy to Drive ASEAN Integration. Chatsuri Sopon Panit, President of the Bangkok Bank, Excellence Ambassadors, ASEAN Member States, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, allow me to first congratulate Bangkok Bank for organizing this business forum, which is timely and very much aligned with this year's ASEAN Chairmanships theme of resilience and innovation. It gives me great honor to share my perspective on the importance of the digital economy in driving ASEAN economic integration. Since its founding in 1967, ASEAN has made great strides in developing its economies and improving the well-being of its people. Plenary statistics give an estimate of a combined GDP of 2.77 trillion in 2017, a growth of 5.3% a year for the next five years. If we can maintain this growth momentum, ASEAN is set to become the world's fourth largest economies in the middle of this century. The prognosis of this region is good, with a young, digital connected, and digital illiterate demographic, and growing middle class supported with the right policy responses, ASEAN is set to benefit from the new digital age. Over the years, ASEAN has also become a trade powerhouse, positioning itself among top five trading economies and a preferred investment destination, with plenary statistics showing a strong rebound in 2000, 2017 from a dip over the past couple of years. Ladies and gentlemen, as impressive as they are, this achievement shall not be taken for granted. Indeed, ASEAN should prepare for and embrace global megatrends, including the fourth industrial revolution, particularly the proliferation of the digital economy. Similar to the mega other megatrends, the, the digital economy has brought about unprecedented, rapid, transformative and irreversible change to the way we produce, work, live and interact. It is driven by new revolutionary yet generally purpose technologies such as big data analytics, artificial intelligence, advanced manufacturing, augmented reality and internet of things. Statistics have lent support to the region potentials to harness opportunity represented by the digital economy. Mobile phone penetration rate in the region exceeds 100%, while monthly internet user reach more than 300 million out of 635 million population. This internet economy in the six, the internet economy in the sixth largest market in ASEAN Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam is estimated to grow from 500 billion in 2017 to 200 billion by 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN has taken some active steps to better prepare for the digital economy. Work is undertaken under, across different sectors from science and technology, IPR, micro, small and medium enterprises, education, 
ICT to connectivity. In fact, Singapore Championships of the ASEAN this year is focusing on deepening ASEAN digital connectivity to better position the region from growing opportunities in innovation and the digital economy. A key aspect deliverable of this year is the ASEAN Agreement on e-commerce, which is currently being negotiated among member states. Once finalized, the agreement will promote and facilitate cross-border transactions through an environment of trust and confidence. This effort is a continuation of our work to promote innovation and technology, including the latest adoptions of the ASEAN Declaration of Innovation in November last year, which intended to reinforce innovation within the ASEAN for the next stage of growth, including through technology transfer, science and technology, and innovation collaboration, as well as collaboration with the MSME. Intellectual properties play a key role in stimulating innovation and encouraging technology commercialization, thus enhancing our preparedness to adopt the digital economy. ASEAN continues to leverage on regional cooperation to support the development of integrated intellectual property services in the regions and improve the patent filing practices. ASEAN also leveraging on technologies to contribute to its human capital development through strengthening of the use of ICT in education sector, such as working towards the establishment of the ASEAN Cyber University to promote cross-border higher education mobility. Beyond this, ASEAN needs the necessary human capital to be able to optimally benefit from the industry 4.0 and the digital economy. Work is therefore underway towards the creation of ASEAN technical and vocational education and training 4.0 for the advancement of quality TVET transformation to be more industry 4.0 ready through networking, partnership and mobilization of TVET personnel and resources. Ladies and gentlemen, along the opportunities presented by the digital economy comes challenges. ASEAN recognizes the growing urgency and sophistication of transboundary cyber threats. As reflected in the ASEAN Declaration to Prevent and Combat Cybercrime adopted at the 31st ASEAN Summit, and the ASEAN Leaders' Statement on Cybersecurity Cooperation at the 32nd ASEAN Summit. An ASEAN Cyber Center and Hub is also under development to further enhance cooperation in addressing cybercrime in the future. Infrastructure gap, including digital infrastructure, will continue to be a challenge. ASEAN need to catch up on the infrastructure investment to catch up with the rapid pace of innovation. The effective implementation of master plan of ASEAN Connectivity 2025 will contribute to meeting this objective. The regional initiatives are not themselves sufficient to address all the challenges related to digital economy. They will need to be complemented and in sync with national policy to be fully effective. Furthermore, a country's ability to participate in the regional initiative is contingent on the national level readiness and capacity. I am encouraged that several ASEAN member states have taken the necessary steps to seize the opportunity brought about by the four IR. Allow me to highlight some of the relevant initiative taking place in these economies. Indonesia recently launched Making Indonesia 4.0, which defined the country's strategy to enter 
the digital era comprising, comprising of five priority area, food and beverages, textile and clothing, automated chemical and electronic sector. In Malaysia, the National Industry 4.0 policy framework drafted was revealed earlier this year, complementing existing initiatives such as the Digital Free Trade Zone and the Center of Excellence in Technology. In the case of Thailand, it is among the first few countries in the region to intensify and make focus efforts to enhance readiness for the for Industrial Revolution. Launched in 19. 2016, Thailand 4.0 served as a new economic model for countries. Thailand 4.0 policy will be achieved by reforming Thailand's existing five industry, or the so-called 5S curve, namely automated, snug, electronic, affluence, medical and wellness, tourism, agriculture and technology, and food for the future as well as promoting five new industry or the new S-curve, namely robotic, robotic, aviation and logistic, biofuels and biochemical, digital industry and medical hub. Ladies and gentlemen, the rise of the digital economy has opened up new possibility for services sector, which has become over the years and increasing important drivers of growth in the region and globally. More specifically, within the financial sectors, financial technology solution pose a great potential for leveraging ASEAN works on regional financial integration. ASEAN is one of the most progressive regions in the implementation of the regulatory sandbox solutions. Four member states, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore and Thailand, have put in place the regulatory sandbox approach to ensure compatibility, com, com, tip, compatibility of the fin, fintechs to existing system as well as to monitor any potential risks that emerge. The ultimate goal is to accelerate innovation by allowing more product and and services offerings within a regulated market. Furthermore, in effort to promote financial inclusion, ASEAN is currently developing the guide, guidance from notes on digital finance services, which outline important elements of enabling regulatory environment for digital financial services in the region. Another key area of work in the is the payment and settlement system where the member state aims towards the interoperability of payment system in the region. The ASEAN member states are working towards adoption of international standard, example ISO 20022 in the region. In addition, a pilot is also undertaken between Singapore and Thailand to explore possibility of linking the real-time retail payment system of the two countries through PayNow and PromPay system. This paved the way for a broader network of real-time RPS linkages among ASEAN member states. Ladies and gentlemen, while this initiative, both at the regional and national level, contribute to ASEAN ability to participate in and benefit from digital economy, there remains challenges to be addressed. The assessment recently undertaken by the ASEAN Secretariat found variation in member state levels of readiness for the fourth industrial revolution. We have gap in different dimension of innovation of techno and technology and enablers, such as broadband access IPR environment, cybersecurity preparedness, as well as human capital. This call for concerted efforts to be undertaken in the relevant areas. 
First, there is urgency to address the issue of digital divide across and within the ASEAN member states through greater investment in connectivity and ICT infrastructure. As a start, efforts should be focused on providing wider and quality broadband access, which is fundamental to further development of digital economy. Second, efforts should be made to further develop awareness of these new technologies and facilities, their adoption by businesses, individuals, and even policy makers. Particularly, particular attention needs to be given to the MSME and individual entrepreneurs to support them in leveraging on this technology to nurture innovation, enhance productivity and competitiveness. Third, appropriate regulatory framework needs to be developed in order to create an enabling environment for digital economy to continue to thrive. This may require a whole of government approach to ensure a more holistic, coherent and coordinated government policy framework involving all private and public stakeholders. It is also important to ensure that policy and regulation evolve in tandem with the changing nature of technologies while recognizing that area of as appropriate reference should be made to the international standards. Finally, the cross-border, cross-cutting nature of these technologies warrant an enhanced regional cooperation, coordination, and partnership. Through sharing of experience, expertise, as well as plans, better synergy, and identification of potential collaboration area can be achieved. In this regard, ASEAN could leverage on its existing mechanism to serve as coordination platform for this collaboration to take place effectively. Ladies and gentlemen, undoubtedly, the event of the digital economy is heralding a new era of ASEAN which calls for new ways of thinking to ensure sustainability of its region in regional integration agenda. Nevertheless, in embracing these new technologies, the people need to remain at the core. The technologies and opportunities of the digital era are not blindly adopted or seizing of their own benefit, but rather because they offer new and innovative, hence better way of to address various are the challenges faced by the region ranging from poverty, health, education, and climate change. With that, I wish the forum success, and thank you very much for inviting me to this very important forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Mr. Lim Chok Hoi. Secretary General of ASEAN, for sharing your vision of economic development and business opportunities in ASEAN, and assuring us that ASEAN will forge ahead towards inclusive growth and sustainable development. Please remain on stage while I invite Mr. Chatsiri to present you with a token of appreciation to have the photographs taken together as well. Now, I would like to invite all distinguished speakers on stage to have the first group photo taken.